Jesus said, when you see me, you see the Father. That's what makes a ministry perpetual. Fathers and sons. But the problem that we have today, people don't know how to say things. My last point. I want to be a computer science. And I come to Sister Bowens. She's already a computer scientist. She's already building computers. I want to be a computer science. And she takes me and she mentors me, take me step by step and show me how to build this computer and, and help me put this computer to, together. Not only do I have a computer, but now I have a skill. And one day, Sister Bowen calls me on the phone. Ring, ring, proper lake. I say, yes. I say, how you doing? I'm fine. I'm getting ready to go over to England, and something is wrong with my computer. Would you come over and check out my computer? I'll leave the key up on the mat at the front door. How in the name of heaven can I have a problem going to this lady's house and fixing her computer? Because I wouldn't have a computer nor the skill to fix one if she had not gave it to me. That's why the dictionary says people who are grateful have a healthy mental attitude. Now, I'm getting ready to quit. After you go to five folks and ask them, is your mentality healthy? I was blessed tonight to hear Minister Sam's testimony. He was telling me about the accident with the bus and how he was pent in and the things that he went through from that experience. My eyes was filling with water, not just because of the miracle that he had received, but my eyes was filled with water because I noticed that that experience did not hinder him Amen. from being grateful. Amen. Still grateful. Still saying thanks. Could have took the attitude of an ungrateful person with criticism and judgment and been mad at the world, mad at the ministry, mad at the bus, mad at the bishop. and been hindered for the rest of his life. But it blessed me to see this man just continually moving and giving. But aren't you glad that you're in the house of God? Amen. You know what? And this is really my conclusion. This is really at this time. This is really the one. Can you imagine all the people who are in churches around the world who do not believe in prophets, do not believe in apostles, but aren't you blessed that you are in a house that teaches that there are apostles and what? Prophets. That's a blessing alone. Now, I said all of that to say this. You are in the right place at the right time. Stand on your feet.
Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Lift those hands up to the Lord right now. Lift those hands up to the Lord. But the Lord say in all things be thankful or be grateful. What I want you to do right now is start thanking him. Just thanking the Lord for where he's going to take you. He's going to take you further. The Lord is going to take us further. Just start thanking for what he's getting ready to do for you. Thank him for it. Come on. Start thanking the Lord. There are some folks in here that the Lord is going to take further. You have not reached your, your climax. There's another realm for there's another realm for, for you. There's more for you. Just simply thank him for it right now. Simply give him thanks for it right now. Just simply give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just thank him for it. This is simple. This is simple. Just thank the Lord for it. Just thank the Lord for it. Just thank the Lord for it. Bless your name. Bless your name. You are in the right place at the right time. Reverend Porter is my friend. He'll always be my friend. That's not going to change. The last time I was here, I was sharing. I said there are 1,600 different shades of green in a forest. Pretty flowers, red, roses, uh, lilies, pennywinkles, I mean, orchids, all kind of beautiful things you find in a forest. He was telling a story, a lady put in his book, how this tree was dying and the problem was in the soil. Then he began to tell us how to beat a bug because the, the foliage is so thick, sunlight cannot get through. But those beetle bugs come and they work in those, that foliage and moves it back so the sunlight can come and, and give it life. There are 16 different colors of green in, in a forest and beautiful, beautiful trees. But winter comes and rain comes and storm comes and it kills those leaves, they fall off the tree and all its beauty begin to turn brown. When the rose falls, it loses colored face and it turns black. But as it dies and turns to muck and dirt, they call that soil. Because something died. Something went through hell in the changing of the seasons. Can the reed grow without the muck and the marrow? What is muck and marrow? A part of that life that went through and suffered and the storm came in the rain and it died. But the only way there can be new life is it has to be the death of somebody. Everybody thinking preaching is glamorous and this is fun and this is the limelight, but you are dying every day so somebody else can live. And that soil, that soil comes from all of those pretty leaves that died and now it has changed form. But because it has changed form and it's not pink and now it's brown, you cannot mistake you cannot make the mistake that that brown, ugly stuff that you call dirt now is not important to the growth of everything else that's in that forest. There is something that's called the snake line. Nothing grows there. You know why nothing grows? Because nothing died. Nothing laid its life down. See, Preachers lay their life down. There were some who could have been athletes. There are some who still could be professors. But they lay that down and let it die so somebody else can live.